Hello, this is the first of at least three videos I'll be making as a follow-up to an earlier video I did on Core Web Vitals and Beaver Builder Speeds. I knew I'd have to come back to this subject as I skirted over the issues there. But as I've done more research and more experiments with Beaver Builder, I've realized there is just too much content to cover in one follow-up video. So I'm trying to break this down. And in this first one, I just wanted to talk about a performance testing site that I've set up, which is just a collection of partially optimized Beaver Builder templates with links going to the various testing services so you can do your own analysis. I've set this up for myself, but I wanted to address some of the understandable cynicism that there is in the Beaver Builder Facebook group about people sharing scores without giving proper context. So I try to give proper context on what I'm doing in this video. It's not meant to be a brag, but Although most influencers, YouTubers, and affiliate marketers out there commend Beaver Builder for its performance, I do tend to feel it's slightly patronizingly done as it's not too bad for an old page builder and maybe not as good as the thing that they are presently promoting. So I largely wanted to address that, but at the same time, I didn't want to perpetuate the idea that you could rate themes and page builders by lab performance scores. I'm not trying to sell Beaver Builder. I'm just trying to present the things that I I'm learning from performance professionals out there and how we might be able to apply that to working with Beaver Builder. Later, I hope to talk about an approach to optimizing Beaver Builder as well as a video that goes through some simple tweaks that we could make to improve results. And probably I'll do a video where I'm dressing how these popular comparative testing of themes and page builders tends not to be too helpful and can be entirely misleading. Anyway, let's get started. You can get to my testing site by going to performance.beaverjunction.com and at the time of recording this, you should see a whole bunch of standard Beaver Builder templates, except this one, which is something I created for the first video. Surprisingly, all I needed to do to get a good result was import the images and optimize them. But I have done a great number of tweaks since, which I think have improved things. And I'll talk about that in the next video. Corresponding to each of these templates is a link here, which will take us to run a new Google PageSpeed Insights test. And I've also also done the same again with GT Metrics, Pingdom, and two for webpagetest.org. With all of these, there is a saved version of an earlier test that I made, and you can just rerun those for your own test. It's different with PageSpeed Insights, although you probably only want to test one at a time and leave three minutes before retesting, as it does cache the scores for a little time. Also on this page, I will be using this to add any of the content that I do on performance. So here is a link to my first video and the notes that go with that. And here is a link to the notes to the video I was hoping to make, which turned out to be too long. So I'll be referencing those notes as I go through these videos. I've also set up a video clip here and I'm gonna run this at fast speed. So I can just quickly show you what there is here in terms of pages. I've tried to get a good cross section. There's the results with each of them. Where well, it's bringing in different things, so that's bringing in a JavaScript counter on this. It's also got a gallery. The next one's got a lot of different images and some animation that goes with that. This next one I think has parallax, yes, and it also has some icons. This one has a lot of background images and again, some more animation. Next one, more box standard, no animation, but a fair number of images. This one's got Google font. It's also got a slider for testimonials and some counters and the gallery as well. Finally, this one has got video, but it falls back to image for mobiles. So hopefully you'll see that's a fairly good cross section, I think. Before I move on and you start testing, I should probably say a few things things about that. Generally, while I've been testing, and that's before I've added caching to this site, and I had also some plugins in the back end, 
I was getting top scores of generally 98 to 100 consistently. So I'm expecting you should get something like 96 to 100, but there are a number of caveats with this. Also that you should be meeting the lab metrics at least for core web vitals. The idea of putting this public is that we might get some actual field data, which will really confirm whether we are passing core web vitals. Again, I'll talk about that in a moment, but it is worth me mentioning that there is a natural variation. If I'm right, and I can't find the Google document again, but if you had an imagined score of 50, if you were to run multiple tests, single tests, you're likely to get a 15 point variation either way of that, because it's gonna depend on the server side of things, and it's also gonna depend on the device that's running the test and things that might be in the browser as well. So that's expected, and that ties in with my experience with, say, a site like Rocket WP, which I know is fast, but sometimes when I go to that, it can be in the 70s, where I know really it should be hitting at around 100. Also, to note that my server can be stretched at times. I've just upped the amount of RAM that I have because it's supporting the Beaver Junction plugin, but I still get some notifications that I'm running out of resources. We are using the Beaver Builder theme on this. I started doing this with the Generate Press theme. Really, the swap over has made no difference, which might surprise some, and I'll talk about that in another video. I am with a US-based San Francisco, in fact, digital ocean droplet, which I've just increased to 2 GB RAM, but it is a shared CPU. There's 11 other sites on it. Most of them are testing, but it's got my Beaver Junction site. It's got my own personal blog on it, as well as the templates. So that's why it's running out of resources on occasions. But I have stuck on presently Cache Enabler, which is a very simple caching plugin to help not improve the scores because I was testing before and they're pretty similar with the caching on, but it should help with the load impact. So previously I was quite surprised how well my hosting was doing with it because I had a number of plugins in the back end. I had Malcare, which is lightweight. I had an SEO plugin, SEO Press, Updraft Plus running and a bunch of other things. And my time to first bite was similar to what I'm getting now with cash enabler on. So we'll see, but it's there really to just stop you folks having an issue if multiple people are on the site. Also something to declare as well is that I've done a few tweaks to um, improve the performance. But they're very minor ones and the things I would do by standard in my Beaver Builder child theme. So I remove emojis. In fact, I've got a link to where you can use the same code. Oh, first one is that I actually add this filter to Beaver Builder, which will allow me to disable any of the modules. I don't think I've disabled any on this one but it doesn't really make much of an impact. I get rid of emojis because there's no point in printing out style sheets for that. I also remove jQuery migrate, which is only temporary. And the only one here that might have a real impact would be deferring all JavaScript except jQuery. But again, minor because of the way that Beaver Builder works, it puts stuff in the footer anyway, all its JavaScript. So these are minor things. Additionally, I've changed over to using Jeff Starr's disabled Gutenberg rather than the classic editor because I'm not using Gutenberg here. And this one will remove the blocks CSS, so Gutenberg's own CSS, which is increasing all the time. Overall, the compressed file size is a saving of about 12 KBs on the load. I've not really noticed it, but definitely it will be a saving of some kind. Okay, let's go and look at what we're expecting to find. So this is a bit of a recap on the last video. And also I can touch a little bit more on field data. So I've run a test on the business one here. And just to recap, what we're looking for is the mobile results because in June 2021, moved now from May, Google are going to be using it as a ranking measure, but only on mobile at the present time. And we are looking at core web vitals. Now we don't know if we pass because we haven't got sufficient world data there. We haven't got our field data in. I don't know how optimistic I am about getting this. So I've set things up in Google console, but in fact, I can just show you this. This is for the main site and it's really only just picked up on it. It's doing okay, but it's only on the desktop and the mobile is the one that matters. You might spot if you've got clients of your own and you check this thing, I've noticed this familiar thing when it first spots you, 
it's room for improvement and then it seems to settle down and everything is good on that. But anyway, I'm not overly hopeful that I'll get the field data here. So what we need to look at is the equivalence to the three measures in Core Web Vitals. Two of those are represented in our lab data. They are signified by these blue badges here and it's largest contentful paint which is how long it takes for the largest element to load in the viewport. And of course, the viewport is going to change depending on the device. And this is simulating a 3G connection. So we want that to be in under 2.5 seconds in order to pass. This is the difficult one, the one we should concentrate on. The next one's easier to sort out, cumulative layout shift. It relates to things moving around. Could be animations, could be pop-ups, or it could be that you haven't set the widths on images and things are just moving around while the page is loading. And the one we are missing, which we won't get until the real world data comes in, is FID, first input delay. And we can use this total blocking time as a proxy for that. So we want to look at these. These want to be in the green. Less important to us should be the one that everybody focuses on, including me. It's hard not to try for this 100 here. But it really isn't weighted in an accord with what's going on with Core Web Vitals. So it's possible to put cumulative layout shift out so it needs improvement. But only move this down to 99, which I think most people would be happy with. But in terms of Core Web Vitals and getting that SEO boost, you're failing. And in terms of the visitor experience, it's not good. And conversely, you can do it the other way around. You can be all in the green here and go down to 90. And if you're not worried about, say, a measure like Time to Interactive, this one's a disputed one because it's really time to constantly interactive. The whole page, all the JavaScript needs to be settled. And that's not necessarily what everybody needs to have a good experience. So that could go very high. And then you could even go into the low 80s, I believe, if that's pushed quite high. So the score here doesn't really necessarily tie in with what we're really hoping to achieve. And of course, we won't necessarily know when we've achieved it until we've got a field data. Let's just have a look at a bit of field data because I skimmed over this first time round. So I've done a test here on WordPress.org. And interestingly enough, I tend to always, when I go to this site, get something like 87 to 89. And if we look at the lab results here, as you can see, I'm failing on the largest contentful paint. So my own measure of this would say that this is failing on the Core Web Vitals. However, over the last 28 days, the field data for this page says it passes. So we can see that here. And I've ticked this on as well, show the original summary where it was failing. Now it was failing, as you can see here, on the same measure, but even if that was a pass and it was under 2.5 seconds, it would probably fail because it needs to be what 75 or more percent of people experience for each of these measures as well, and this was 74. And looking at this as it presently stands, it looks like I'm in the 13% of people who are not passing in the way that the field data is picking up on. So you can see there's a great room for variation and this is the only helpful thing. One other thing to point out about this is that it's being gathered from real Chrome users information, which is anonymized and it's gathering it cumulatively over a 28 day period. So this is a constantly shifting figure. So should you find that you've had a problem with your site and you don't know about it and you're looking to this field data, it's going to take you days to really realize that you've got a huge problem because it's going to be that accumulative change. There is a great plugin. I'll just talk about this. I haven't fully tested it out, so I'm not sure if it is that great, but I shall soon know. It's by Sabrina Zidane, who I really like, and it's called Speed Guard. And I've put it on the site here. It will allow you to measure your largest contentful paint, set it to mobile as, as I have. And in the settings, you can have it send you, depending on where you want to be alerted, what you've set this to in terms of seconds and how often you run the, run the test. It'll tell you whether there's a problem or not, so you can get in there and sort it out before you have to read the problem here. And conversely as well, if you make some changes and you're looking for the improvement, you're probably not gonna see that for some time. Okay, I think that's enough on the scores. Let me go back here. And just to finish off, I'll just quickly go over these other tests. They're not 
as useful. Core Web Vitals is what we're interested in the most. So let's just go through this on the same one, the business site. So really this just tells me how long it takes to get this on the desktop. So these are desktops, so it's, it's a bit more of a vanity measure really with this, but we can see things. It's got a wonderful waterfall and it didn't take me long really given our servers in San Francisco to get to Vancouver here. Interestingly enough, if I go over to the less useful one, Pingdom, it just gives me total load. It has an increased page size compared to what GT Metrics picked up. But here you can see the load time's even faster, but perhaps it's latency because it's going to be closer. I'm at San Francisco for this test. And then we have the web page tests as well here. Not so encouraging on this one. When I run this one on cable on Chrome in California, it's almost a second on my runs here. I can do various runs and they're all pretty much similar, close to one second. Not a worry, but not as good as what the others seem to show. And if I go over and simulate a Samsung Galaxy S7 on a slower 3G connection, I'm actually failing on the largest contentful paint. And a few of the templates that I've done do exactly the same. So, uh, you know, a lot of variation here, but there's a lot of interesting information to test out. So I'm going to leave that all with you to test. I hope this was a useful video. I'll come back next and talk about approaches to using those tools there and optimizing a site. But thank you for sticking with me. If you did like this video, then please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.